Hi YouTube, and welcome back to my lab. Today I'll be performing a reaction I've always wanted to try, which is the Hoffman rearrangement of benzamide to make anode. In today's procedure, I'll be using the following. 48 grams of sodium hydroxide, representing 1.2 moles. 24.21 grams of benzamide, or 0.2 mole. And 15.4 grams of trichloroisocyanuric acid, or TCCA for short equivalent to 0.066 mole. This will react to provide 0.2 moles of hypochlorite. Lastly, some water and ice will also be needed. To begin, I place a 1 litre beaker on the hot plate and add 330 milliliters of water along with about 170 grams of ice cubes, bringing up the solution to about 500 milliliters in total volume. Slowly, I began adding all 48 grams of sodium hydroxide. The solution of sodium hydroxide is really quite exothermic, which is why the ice is so important. We need to maintain the solution cold even after I begin adding all the sodium hydroxide. After a few minutes of stirring, I now add the 15.4 grams of TCCA, which slowly dissolves. The solution turns a slight yellow-green color. This is due to the reaction between sodium hydroxide and TCCA, which generates trisodium cyanurate, but also sodium hypochlorite, the active ingredient in bleach, which is responsible for the color. So now I have my hypochlorite solution, so I weigh out my amide. In this case, 0.2 moles of benzamide. Slowly, I began throwing in the benzamide into the basic sodium hydroxide solution. The benzamide tends to float on top but of the vigorous mixing, it helps mix everything together and the solution begins to foam somewhat, which is a promising sign if we look at the reaction mechanism and the overall reaction scheme. In the Hoffman rearrangement reaction, the hydroxide ion first deprotonates or removes a hydrogen atom from the amide. This protonated amide then reacts with the electrophilic hypochlorite anion to form an n-chloramide, in this case, n-chlorobenzamide. The nitrogen in the n-chlorobenzamide is now even more acidic due to the chlorine atom withdrawing electron density from the nitrogen. By further deprotonation, we form the N-chloroamide anion. This anion then rearranges. The phenyl group migrates to the nitrogen atom with a simultaneous loss of chlorine and the formation of an additional nitrogen-carbon bond. This forms the phenyl isocyanate intermediate. In the presence of water, isocyanates react by a nucleophilic addition step with water to yield the carbamic acid, which then spontaneously loses CO2 and ultimately yields our aniline and amine product. As we generate an isocyanate intermediate, other nucleophiles like alcohols and amines can also be used to form stable carbamates and ureas, respectively. Now I used sodium hypochlorite and sodium hydroxide, but there are several other reagents that can achieve the same transformation. These include bromine and sodium hydroxide, forming sodium hyperbromide in situ, and bromosuccinamide in the presence of the strong base, as well as other reagents such as lead tetraacetate and this trifluoroacetooxy iodobenzene. Over the course of my additions, the solution slowly turns darker and darker. This is due to several other side reactions which are occurring. Aniline, unfortunately, is quite sensitive to oxidation, and hypochlorite is an oxidant. Under these alkaline conditions, aniline can undergo various side reactions, forming compounds such as azobenzene and endoaniline, parahydroxyazobenzene for aniline azobenzene, and even more interesting compounds such as azophene and some polymers of aniline. Aniline finds many uses in different products, and most notably in the production of polyurethane, synthetic dyes, and medicines. The Hoffman rearrangement reaction does find some common use in, for example, the preparation of anthranilic acid from phentalamide, but is also used in the synthesis of gabapentin. After complete addition of the benzamide, the solution was transferred to a 1 litre Erlenmeyer flask and heated with stirring for 20 minutes at 60 degrees. After which, it was set up for distillation. As aniline is light sensitive, 
I've wrapped the flask, condenser and collecting flask with aluminium foil. Slowly, a milky white liquid and a yellow liquid started collecting in the collecting flask. Distillation was continued until the distillate became clear. As the solution is quite turbid, and just because aniline is slightly soluble in water, I decided to add 60 grams of salt to the solution in order to decrease the aniline solubility and hopefully separate the aniline. After stirring, a golden yellow orange layer formed on top. The solution was then poured into a 250 milliliter separatory funnel and the lower layer was removed. The leftover yellow liquid was then washed once with 100 milliliters of a saturated salt solution, then followed by 100 milliliters of distilled water. In the end, the yellow liquid was drained into a 50 milliliter beaker along with 3 grams of potassium hydroxide. I'm using the potassium hydroxide as a dehydrating agent. Because the solution still looked wet, I added another 2 grams of potassium hydroxide for in total of 5 grams. After the solution turned clear, I simply filtered everything into a small pre-weighed amber glass bottle and tightened. In the end, I got 4.78 grams of a yellow liquid of crude aniline, which I'll be using in an upcoming video. But equally important, can we talk about the yield? 26% is really disappointing, and considering aniline is so useful, I'm planning on repeating the same reaction. But I need your help. If you have any tips or ideas on how I could help improve my yield, I'd love to hear about it in the comment section below. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and see you soon.